Elias Lacerda ähm, kommt von Evonik und schon weit, geht es weiter mit Fußball. Ja? Ihr Unternehmen ist inzwischen bei Borussia Dortmund eingestiegen. Das ist sicherlich ein gutes Investment. Lewandowski hin oder her. Ähm, kommen ja bestimmt jetzt wieder neue. Ich weiß nicht, ob es eine gute Idee ist, einen Stürmer zu äh, verpflichten, der Immobile heißt. Aber äh, gut, no, no games with names. Meine Damen und Herren, von Evonik Industry, Vice President Global Sales and Key Account Management, Elias Lacerda, schön, dass Sie da sind. Wir überziehen natürlich, damit Sie Ihre halbe Stunde voll kriegen. Global Key Account Management, strategische Kundenauswahl und Betreuung. So, jetzt aber, Danke. ja. Überwinden Sie Ihr Trauma. Wir werden Sie auf einer Dankeschön. Begeisterung und Zustimmung Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here. So today we will not talk about football, as, as mentioned before. We talk about um, key account management program, and I hope I can share some of the, our insights, what we have done in Livonic, and uh, hope you can enjoy it. Um, before we start, I, I don't want to bore you with so many slides from Livonic, but just a little bit for you that does not know what we do, to understand what our company is about, what are our challenges, and what kind of markets we serve. Evonik is um, a global leader in specialty chemicals. We, we are proud to say that um, the markets that we serve, we held number one or number two positions or leader positions. We have our technologies very much integrated. It means that uh, from the beginning of our raw material to the end of the product, every, everything is pretty much integrated. Um, we have a strong balance between our products and business activities, meaning that we are not focused in one specific market and we don't have one specific product. We have a number of markets and products and I'm gonna show in a minute. And we do believe that we have a very strong and close collaboration with the customers. So this is the successful of, of Evonik. Not only this, the last point, but very important ones, we don't do research based on what you think, we do research based on what our customers believe. So we try to do market research, market research uh, innovation that would develop a new product. Evonik is a huge German company with 13 billion euros of sales in 2013 and two billion euros of EBIT today. So it's a huge uh, German chemical complex. We are focused on mainly three areas. Uh, if I can put in a very simple words, the number one is the consumer health and nutrition. What is basic animal nutrition products is related to so amino acids for, for chicken, poultry, and, and many different applications. And then we have the health part of Evonik, so the pharma polymer and the cosmetics. And uh, this is a very, very important and very important part of our business. The second one is so-called resource efficiency. So we believe that we generate products that can lead to a better world. So products that go in the different raw materials that can generate, in the end of the day, efficient in resources. Can be energy, can be long-lasting bridges, can be many different things. And the third one we call specialty materials. They are polymers and essential chemistries that goes to a number of different applications. For example, the plexiglass, the glass that you use in your home, is produced by this, uh, this business in your unit. Um, I tried to put in a very short way how many end markets we are present, and you see it's well split it from consumer goods to food to automotive, construction, pharmaceutical. We try to cluster in more than 13 markets, but it's more than over than 50 industries. And we are truly a global company. So 50% of our sales is in Europe, but we have 20, around about 20, and the other 20 in Asia and in North America, and we have a growing part going Central and South America. So the high degree of, um, of stability for the company is due to the variation of uh, business market and regions that we have. So this is good and bad in different, uh, in different moments. Um, I'm part of one business unit of Evonik that we call inorganic materials. And the inorganic materials is producing three main products. So we believe in this, uh, in this business unit that inorganic particles is our main core competency, and we produce th three main particles here. One is uh, silica, and then out of the silica we produce uh, organosilence, and we produce chemical catalysts. Just for you to have an idea what we do with those products, so, 
Um, the silica is using, for example, in silicon rubber. If you take whatever silicon rubber in your home, it's just staying as it is because there is a silica inside, or you can only drive your car uh, 300 or 250 kilometers per hour. So there is our silica inside reinforcing the, the whole tire. Or paint seconds can only be applied in your wall because there is a silica inside giving the matting effect or giving the rheology effect. So there's a couple of additives and essential products that goes to this application. The same with silence. Silence is an organic modified product that gives a very high stability. So if you take a building protection of most of the buildings in Berlin, has been treated with, uh, with uh, organic silence that whatever rain or snow comes around makes the building well protected. And chemical catalyst is a product used in chemical companies. So you use a catalyst to produce a different, uh, different application. So you give us a very high rate of, um, of uh, catalyst, of conversion of reaction. So you can see it's three different um, business lines, and if you have to establish a connection with the customer, you have to, do, you have to be well organized when you do this. Let me go a little bit of our history of our key account management program. So in, let's say, before 2000 and 2006, we have a very strong key account selling mode. So we were selling to every single account in this world. We were dealing with them. We were dealing um, extremely organized, and everything was fine. What happened? The strong consolidation of the industries make us to think what we were doing was correct or wrong. So some of our accounts, they were becoming so big in the industry, they were asking different things for us than it was before. So they were asking a structured different than what we had before. So we have to implement it. It was around about 2006, 2007, a very strong global key account program to be sure that we have developed innovations and tendencies and everything what we're doing in a global basis. This is what we have implemented. Um, interesting to see, we focus on the blue one that stays here, but the gray one, maybe some regional important ones, there was lacking behind. So in 2000, end of 2000, beginning of 2010, we run a completely research, how should we attain our customers, and we develop that I would like to present to you today, so-called embedded type key account program. Um, by doing this exercise about an year, what we have identified, just looking for the, the left side, that is um, importance and attendance of accounts should not be mixed. So sometimes we say that as a global corporation, it's very important, not necessarily. So what we try to do, we try to differentiate importance that attendance for the account. We said there are an ABC account, so we gave a, a catch number for the organization, like a future winners, direct accounts, and distributed accounts. At the same time, you have accounts still attending in a different way. So we have accounts that you need to have a global key account manager. There are accounts where they are just playing globally, and you have to coordinate this, and there are accounts with a regional approach. So we identified this process and we said, how can we attend, how, how can we build up a program to the accounts that are gonna make us or break us? That's why it came the name of Future Winners. So if we win with those accounts, if they win in the future, we're gonna win the future as well. If we bet in the wrong, in the wrong account, we saw scarce resources that we have today, and then we might have a problem. So that was the idea behind the whole program. Um, what we have done, we have said, this program has to have very clear and simple objectives that the organization understands. Evonik has over 39,000 employees, and if you want to implement something like this, you have to make sure that you are implementing closer group. So we said, if the first target, the first objective you said, if we target in accounts, we have to leave what we are target. So we have to focus on the future wins that we are doing. That was the first one. The second one, if we are focusing on someone of the accounts, we have to make sure that we are getting the maximum of them. So we have to make sure that we are getting the full business potential which is available for us. And number three, we said, if the community, if everybody in the company, it doesn't matter if it's production, supply chain, marketing sales, is not with us, and then we just implemented a very nice paper that can put in our shoe blood. So we, we said these three, these three elements, they are extremely important as objectives, to move ahead. And we said, in order to, to achieve these goals, there are four elements where we have to pay attention. 
So we could develop here thousands if you see together, but for us, four elements was the most important ones. The, the number one was how we do the selection. So how we do the selection of the selections accounts. As soon as you select the account, you had to put resources on this. So we said, we have to have a very clear selection on this. The second one, given the different industries and the different product lines, we don't want to develop a standard, but we want to develop a minimum standard. This will be the minimum that you should do it if you want to act with those accounts selected. The third one is the governance. We say, as soon as you select it, as soon as you implement it, make sure that everybody is informed. So how you will implement this in the, whole, in the whole organization. And number four is the talent development. So you have to have the people, the right people on board. As, um, as we heard a minute ago, without, without the good people, we don't have anything, anything um, implemented. So those are the four main task force that we have worked and still part of our program today. So let me give you a little bit of a flavor of this, the, four, the four areas. The number one is the selection of selection accounts. In my 18 years in sales, marketing, managing director, I, have, I haven't seen so many selections of, of accounts that we're going to focus on. Have, you, have been some selections which is mathematic, how much can we get out of it, and have been some selection which is stomach. So I think he's a good customer to cooperate with. So what do we try to do? We try to combine this stomach and mathematic in algorithm here. So what we try to do, we try to implement it a gate process when you go from the hard fact to the soft fact. Let me give a little bit of flavor what we have done. So we start saying, if we select an account, this account will cost you money. So you're going to have to be there. You're going to have to, if it costs you money, you're going to have to invest on those accounts. So we have defined five elements that we say those five hard facts elements, if three of them, it's according to what you would think, and then go to the next stage. It can be business potential, it can be already good sales that we have with account, but if, if three from the five goes okay, and the account goes to the next stage. And the next stage is innovation and technology. We want to cooperate with accounts that will be winning in the future. So should be technology leader, should be innovation leaders, should be an account growing over market share. So if four from the, the elements that we have selected, if two was okay, and then go to the next stage. At the next stage, in the chemistry, we call the alchemy part, which is the strategic fit. So there are customers that you have empathy to work with. There are customers that is difficult to understand. And we try to put this in, in words. We, we define seven different elements in the strategic fit, starting from geographic footprint to centralization of procurement to financial stability that we say, if these seven elements, they are okay, it means that the strategic fit with us, you're gonna be, you're gonna be okay. So we try to understand who we are as a company and what are our customers out there. And all this list of accounts going to, through this funnel, through this uh, three-grade process, was approved, was sent to the management team. So we and our management team were sitting together and saying those accounts, they go further to be invested. So this is the selection process in a very nutshell. Um, now going to the minimum standards. For the minimum standards, we have defined two basic elements. The number one is the key account plan, well-known key account plan. And we have seen also across the company many different plans coming across. And I don't want to go to all the details what, I, what we have written here, but for us, the, a good key account plan was based on three, three elements, was a good analysis, was a clear objective and strategy, and a very good in, effective implementation. If these three analysis, three points was in the account plan, and the account plan was, was, was approved and completed. So this is what we have defined in these six points, analysis, strate strategy, and implementation. Uh, not only this, if you do this, you have to do with the whole organization. So what we have defined also in the minimum standards is roles and responsibilities. So we don't want to see top management negotiating prices, and we don't want to see uh, um, sales managers uh, trying to build up a relationship with very high level if, 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 if top manager has to be involved. So we try to define who has to be in the field, play, and where. 
Otherwise, we have like the Brazilian selection that, that the defense was going to the front to try to make a goal. So we tried to make sure that everybody was playing the field in the right place. So we defined like relationship building, strategic issues, technical issues, and daily business. Who should be, has to be informed and who has to be involved. The third point of the program is the governance, meaning how we operate with those accounts. So the Future Winners Program is not a separate entity, it's not a cell, it's integrated. We start in the beginning saying this should be embedded, this should be a part of the whole organization. So it doesn't matter if you develop, we develop a business line strategy or you have any of the sales meeting or, or marketing meetings or industry meetings, the future winners was the most one important topics that we're gonna discuss. So we're really walking our talks. Focus on them as well as we're working on this. And we have uh, on top a future winners core team monitoring that the organization was leaving the principles that we have. And this monitor, we define in words saying we want to see if the transparency was there, we want to see if the strategy and implementation was, was there, we want to see if the cross PO they were learning, what they see with the accounts they have in common, we want to do joint projects and joint vision with those accounts, and in the, in the end of the day, we want to see our share of wallet growing by implementing this program. So this was the, this was the idea behind of the, the governance and implementation. And we have implemented this program not only in the central office, we have this plan, this problem globally. In every single plan that we have, in every single operation that we have, we have been announced who are the accounts that we're gonna be focused on. Everything that I have said so far is just um, crap if you don't have the right people in place. So we said we have to have people going to our customers with the skills to attend them. So, and then our question was, what kind of skills should we develop if you have those important accounts that can make us and break us? So what do we have defined? We have defined four, we call skill classes for the key account management that we said, if this four is okay, the probability that we can win our future is very high. So the number one we said is managing interface with the key accounts. Someone that can go to account and can make sure that the door is gonna be open that is listening to what he's saying, the county is saying, and, and the county is respectful listening to what we are saying. So you have, we have this channel open to communicate. And the second one is the strategic skills. Not only coffee and cake, not only be there, not only good contact, but making sure that the strategy that we have in place is implemented, that the account understands exactly what we want to achieve. Not only this two, this two is not an only enough, that the, in the B2B business that we are present with, very important is the management skills. Monday morning, the truck has to arrive. Tuesday, the sample has to be there and someone has to manage it. So we have to be sure that the managing, managing skills has to be also present in these people. And number four is this internal skills. So you pick up the phone and you call Mr. Hans and say, Hans, what's happening with the, with the truck? And Hans knows me. So he knows, he knows that if I call him and it's important, he knows that something has to be done. So that you have this connection between those attending the customer and internal organization. So we, we identify these four skills and we, we cluster this in 19, we call skill, skills itself, and we evaluate every single key account manager we have in our organization on the skills. And we evaluate in a very complex matrix, saying like a 360 degrees, like looking what the account is doing, what the PS was saying, what the customer was saying, and, and, and we did a tailor-made training for every single key account manager that we had, or that we have. Looking when the strengths are, and when weakness, weakness or training needs was, uh, was, was showing us. And we have a very open discussion with every single account saying, hey, my friend, here there is something that we have to cooperate together. And we did, this training, the state of maintain training, keep in mind what kind of uh, attendance of the accounts that we have. It means managing interface of a key accounts, if, if it's a global account, is a completely different managing interface if it's a regional account. So you have to have in a global and a regional phase a different training of those accounts. What 
what came across and came to our mind as well, as soon as you invest, as soon as you do things, you have to make sure the organization is going to be living this for additional 100 years. So we are more than 100 years company. How can we guarantee the future? So we did a very organized uh, succession plan saying there are some, some key account managers which have a very high impact in our business and very difficult to replace. And we create a very important key function for those accounts. And these key functions we have listed on a global, on a regional basis. And we have defined and starting up from the scratch new, new people to be one day taking the position of those accounts. That's in the nutshell what, uh, what I would like to present to you about our key account management program. Hope you will you have some points that you have identified, and I'm open for questions. So thank you very much. Vielen Dank, Elias Lacerda. Any questions, wie wir im internationalen Geschäft sagen? Bitte schön. Hier vorne, bitte. So, thank you very much for this um, tons of information about global account management <laughs> and for me uh, it's really interesting to see that um, anyhow in which branch you are working if in automotive uh, telecommunication or like me in the energy sector uh, or like you in the chemistry the global account management systems are very similar very similar so that's one part um, so therefore I have two very um, dedicated questions. Please. The first is about the contact matrix, because you said, of course, I don't want to let our top management negotiate uh, single prices. So do you uh, work with contact matrix systems? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We have a completed contact matrix in the organization. We know whom who has to contact whom in the organization. And this is led by the, by the key account manager. We don't want to have a phonio contact that one person is bringing all the knowledge of a company so that uh, I am going to account bringing all the knowledge of a supply chain that we have. That's senseless. So, but I'm, I'm leading the supply chain person to the right person of supply chain with the account. So we try to, to, to build up for both sides this kind, of, uh, this kind of contact. So we have a completed contact matrix in place. And this is documented in our key account management uh, in, in the key account plan. Yeah, very interesting. So, um, next question is about pricing. What we face all the time is different countries, different markets, different prices. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, basically, if you are going in a global account management agreement, um, then the uh, pros for both sides, so on the one hand side, uh, you are getting a higher level of orders. On the other hand side, the global account is get a, getting better conditions. Yeah? So basically, that's it. Uh, but from country to country, the market price could be different. And are you going to agree with your global account different prices for different markets? Yeah. So sometimes we believe we drive prices. I mean, who drive prices is market. And for us, this is, a, this is a very clear science. So we have to understand how the market prices is, and we have to support those future winners in the market that they can win also the future. So if we have a corporation dealing in Brazil, in the US, and in Germany, and they have three market, market prices, we have to be in three market places. But we have to be not only with the prices, we have to be with assets, we have to be the whole structure to accomplish also a very important part, which is the cost. And then you have the, the right profit is in there. So we, the matrix between price and costs is something that we have always, in terms of investments, to keep in mind. So answer your question, yes. We, we support those accounts for them to win the future. Yeah? So, and this is one of the important elements. Bitte sehr. Haben Sie das Mikro schon? Nein, es, es kommt. Yes, hi, my question is, uh, my name is Sylvia. I'm from a quite same big company like you are. And my question would be, how do you do um, this information sharing? Do you use also kind of a platform like we heard before? And how does it work? Because this is right now our change, our challenge globally to keep this information really a living tool and uh, with such a big company. Yeah, communication will always be a challenge in every single company. I think this is, uh, whatever you do, whatever you implement it, it will always be a challenge. 
And I think this is one of our main challenges, something that we are really watching on. So we believe that, uh, and it's also part of the program, there are two types of communication. There is a passive communication. If you go to account and write a core report and put in the CAM and I send to a report all over the globe, we believe that everybody's reading this report, which is not really the truth. Or if you put an article on the internet, we believe that everybody's reading. Or we put a post, everything. We, we have kind of a IBM connections that we, we communicate to the whole the community. We believe that everybody is seeing this. So this is one tool to do it, but we, we strongly believe in active communication. So I sit down with my team, with the people dealing in the regions and say, listen, this is the global strategy, this is what we're going to do in the region. Do you have any question? Do you have any compliments? So you, you have to do this in a tailor-made way. There is no way to do it just by remote control, yeah, at least our experience. Coming back to your selection process of how you select your key accounts, you have this mm -hmm. gate process, one, two, three. Um, when you first looked at your customer base, you had certainly key accounts also important customers to the company. When you went through this gate process, what changed? Which customers popped up newly, which fell out, and what did your sales team say about that? Yeah, there was a, a couple of customers, no, no, no brainer. It was just a, a confirmation that we should continue doing this. But a couple of accounts, especially when you go to the second one, which is uh, innovation and technology leader, and then you see what the problem, problem state. I'm not saying that we will focus on future winners. We have future winners and future losers. That's not the idea of the program. The program is when we have to put a resource, which one we have to put on. Yeah. There are some industries that we don't have alternatives. The, the market's so small, the players are so small that we have to put resources on all of them. But we're going to see how the whole program goes, uh, goes uh, in this direction. So we, we, do have some, we did have some surprises during the process. Um, Indeed. Uh, yeah. Some of them, uh, so how the salespeople reacted, some of them, they, they were expecting this kind of result, but they, they were not speaking up. Yeah, they say, okay, you say there's a key account, um, but now I, we all see that it's not a key account. The process became so clear for organization, and, and if they say, no, no, I'm, I, do, I do not agree with this, I say, okay, let's go, let's go together, let's see what, what's wrong with what we're doing here. Do you see more? more hard facts coming? Do you see more innovation coming? Or do you see there is a big strategic fix that can lead everything? So we had a platform to discuss not only saying, that's my feeling. We will not do it. So we have real something that we, can, we could put on the table. Das war's. Meine Damen und Herren, den Neymar des Global Account Management, <laughs> Elias Laferda. Schön, dass Sie Thank da waren. Von Thank you. Ganz herzlichen Thank Dank you. Dank. Thank you. Dankeschön.